Welcome back to this collection of Dredge Horse Greatest Games. The game we'll uh, be looking at now is, is not a famous one at all. It's a win by Greg Hjorth against a young player called Ray Cass. The game was played in the Adelaide Australian Invitational Junior Championship. These were special events organised by the Koshnitskis in Adelaide, uh, the great uh, Australian chess organisers, and they invited uh, a top player from each state to compete uh, in a round robin. Round robins were extremely rare in Australia, so it was a, a rare opportunity for the top juniors to meet uh, against each other uh, and, well, almost all the juniors that were invited uh, would come and play. Now, Ray Cass did go on to uh, become Australian junior champion, uh, but uh, certainly when he played in this tournament in 1980, Greg Hjorth was already uh, one of the top players in the country. He'd already come second in the Australian Championship in Adelaide uh, earlier in the year, so he, he was definitely favourite for the tournament, and he justified his favouritism. And uh, this game does illustrate how even with Black, uh, Greg was able to outclass uh, even some of the best juniors uh, of this time. So the game started as an English, and after e5, knight c3, knight f6, knight f3, Hjorth plays e4. This was really cutting edge theory at the time. It's a, a gambit that was popularised by uh, Juan Manuel Bellon, a player was, uh, Greg was to beat uh, in a, f a few years' time, a Spanish grandmaster who came up with all sorts of unorthodox ideas. Uh, this particular one, the idea is after knight g5, that e4 pawn is doomed, but you can play uh, b5. Now, b5 looks completely crazy, but if you take it with the pawn, then black can play d5, and then knock the knight on g5 around with h6. Uh, if you take it with the knight, black has time to go c6 and d5, or even start with h6, and uh, then uh, again black keeps a big pawn centre, of course at the cost of a pawn. And one of the big traps in this line is if black defends with b3, rather white defends with b3, black will play b4. And if knight takes pawn, h6, and white cannot avoid losing material because after knight takes, queen takes, the knight on g5 is hanging, but so is the rook on a1. So uh, Cass knows what the main line is with theory, which is d3, which is the move that really has put uh, b5 out of business. Uh, but it's not that easy. So it takes on d3, takes on b5, you, you can also take back on d3, but taking on b5 was considered the main line. And here, if uh, black takes on uh, e2, bishop takes e2, and black's position is really difficult with problems on the long white diagonal and the knight on b8 unable to develop. So Hjorth tries something different. d5, queen takes d3, he's still a pawn down, but he decides to ditch another pawn, he plays knight d7. Now, still, uh, this is n has never been uh, used in top-level play after, before this game or afterwards, but it's a very nice idea. Uh, certainly, you, you've got other developing moves, just pl playing a pawn down, but white seems to be better. After knight d7, it's not quite so easy, with black ready to play knight c5 or knight e5. Knight takes d5 was played, Knight e5, knight f6, queen f6. So after queen takes f6, it looks as if white can just win material with queen e4. The threat is against the rook on a8, of course, but also there is a threat of pawn to f4. But it turns out uh, Hjorth had prepared the idea bishop e7, and after queen takes rook, bishop b4 check. And there are real difficulties here for uh, white, whether he plays king d1 or whether he plays bishop d2. In e either case, uh, well, white, uh, black is going to swap bishops on bishop d2 and castle. If king d1, you can just castle. And although uh, black is down a lot of material, the white king is in trouble no matter which way you, you cut it. So in the end, Cass decided not to test the uh, uh, opening so much and play queen c3. His idea is uh, at some point to play f4 and swap the queens off, but it turns out to be not so simple. Bishop b7, remembering of course white is still a pawn up, bishop d2, bishop d6, and finally f4. If you don't do that, then black is going to castle, and uh, well, white really struggles to develop here because of the pressure on the long diagonal. Perhaps knight f3 uh, could be played, but uh, black will, again will just castle, and it, it looks lots of compensation here for black. Uh, so, Cass tried f4, knight g4, queen takes queen, and now a wonderful move, taking back with the pawn. Of course you could take back with the knight with plenty of compensation, but 
well, Hjorth realises it's not the end game that's uh, really going to be uh, a worry for him. He's got to win this in the middle game with this pawn deficit. And uh, now the knight has to go back. It could come back to f3, but there are problems with bishop c5 anyway. But even after knight h3, bishop c5. And uh, black is just going to castle queenside, put a rook on e8. And it's getting really hard for white to move the pieces. Because the white knight is on h3, he can't get rid of the black knight with h3. He can't move his uh, rook to g1 so that he can develop the bishop on f1. It's really looking ugly. He played rook c1, which does gain a move after bishop back to b6. Uh, but maybe white should try a4 with a5 in mind here. He played b4, which doesn't do too much. And rook c3 stops something jumping in on e3, but only temporarily. And rook e8. And here, it's great value for a pawn. Uh, it's actually two pawns at the moment, but really white struggles to move. He tried king d1. It's really hard to see any way to escape. The king side is just not moving. Uh, but after king d1, you've got big problems uh, on the d2 bishop. Certainly, uh, knight e3 check looks pretty good because you can threaten to take on f1 and then bishop takes g2. But bishop e3 is also rather strong. Uh, if you block with rook d3 now, then black simply plays bishop e4 and wins the exchange. He tried rook c2, and unfortunately after rook d7, Cass is really without a move. If he moves his king back to e1, black just doubles the rooks, and after king c1, rook takes is just winning material if rook takes rook d8. It's, it's a, just a, a game showing that despite material disadvantage, just keeping the initiative, being willing to wreck your pawn structure again for the initiative, and okay, the opposition wasn't uh, the greatest, but... Uh, Really interesting opening ideas and, and followed up extremely precisely uh, towards the end. Just a power game, overwhelming a, an opponent that just wasn't in the same class.